Welcome to Bruins Overtime Live presented by buyatoyota.com. For offers not seen on TV, visit buyatoyota.com with Billy and Barry. I'm Sophia. Heading into this game, the Bruins had only one loss in their previous six. They were playing really good hockey, but tonight we discussed it, guys, facing a very desperate Washington Capitals team. Bruins ended with only 16 shots on net, their lowest of the season. Previous low was 18 against the same Caps team and against Charlie Lindgren. 2-0 the final, guys. Shut out in a game that Washington out-efforted them. Yeah. Um, will can beat skill, right? Yes. And, I mean, it's not, it's not that the Caps don't have some skill, but they're not the same Washington Caps from even a couple of years ago when Backstrom and Kuznetsov and Ovechkin were fly, high-flying yeah. Caps. They barely score regularly more than two goals a game right now. Mm -hmm. But what they do play lately in particular is strong defense with very good goaltending. They had much more emotion. They had much more. Their edges were sharper in this game, Barry. They were, they were literally skating harder than the Bruins were. And the other thing is, I felt they were playing. I kind of felt the Bruins were just thinking their way through the ice at times, and that's not a good thing. Yeah, I think Washington, as we talked in the pregame, they controlled their own destiny. This is a veteran team that these wild card teams have been flipping and flopping, and all of a sudden Washington goes, you know what, we've got a second chance. Right. We control our own yeah. destiny. They went out, and uh, they outwilled the Bruins early on. The Bruins played a little bit better in the third period, but they didn't have that desperation early on that Washington had. And now Washington gets a chance to go into Philly, again, controlling their own destiny and win that game, and they're in. So. And one way to show that, which you mentioned in the first intermission, one way to tell about the desperation was the physicality, which Washington started right off the top of the first period. We can tell that they were there. Yeah, they did. I mean, they, they were uh, lining Bruins up. They were trying to uh, you know, use that physical element, wake up, make sure that they were ready to go. We remember uh, March 30th, the Bruins won in that shootout win. This guy, Tom Wilson, wasn't playing, Billy, but he knew you knew right away early on in this hockey game that Tom Wilson was back. Yeah, and you could tell as part of their game plan. Yeah. I mean, look, everybody wants to be physical, but the Caps are a big team. I mean, they're physically a big team, especially up front, and they wanted to use that against the Bruins. They made sure that they close quickly on the Bruins as much as possible, that they look to seal the wall immediately. They were more than happy to engage the Bruins into kind of a wall battle, like dogfight along the wall here. You could Numerous times we saw plays like that where you would see a, a cap player just kind of frame up along the wall and, and either do a reverse hit or wait for the hit. They did that, and they were just playing old-fashioned hockey. They're not a fancy team, and the Bruins claim they're not a, a fancy team. That's fine, but they got... They just got out, out effort at, at times in this one. And again, the, you keep ramp desperation. This was a hit. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that Freddie one in a minute. But you go about desperation. You, you can't replicate that in practice. You can't, you know what I mean? You can't say, well, we're going to be intense and try and meet their intensity. You either are or you're not. And then this one, the Bruins tried, but the Caps were really invested. Yeah, and I also think Washington's offense came away from, uh, occurred because of the Bruins' turnovers and giveaways and transition and counterattacks. It wasn't like they were making end-to-end -end rushes. It was it's just the Bruins would give it away, and then bang, they'd come right back at you and usually have an outnumbered offense opportunity great segue Barry because that's what we want to talk about and I, I just want I'm here to, for yourself thank you want to point out that on the stats sheet it says five turnovers but we counted way more than that by the Boston Bruins yeah it says six to five Washington with the Bruins but again I can look at the line ahead of it it says the Bruins had 50 hits to Washington's 41 so the stat sheet seems to be a little bit off but as we talked about right in our first intermission Billy and uh Brick has been talking about it all game, especially early on. The Bruins just weren't sharp. They were not making tape-to-tape -tape passes. They weren't moving their feet. They were, they were caught. The desperation and the urgency here. Here's the counterattack again. The Bruins have control of the puck. They get it out, and all of a sudden, bang, they give it away. And all of a sudden, you're going to have major, major counterattacks the other way, like right here. You have a good scoring opportunity. Just too many giveaways by the Bruins. Yeah. Yeah, your, your giveaway might be their takeaway. You know, right. not that I want to say who cares, but for our take on this game, it was a lot of giving away. That is not saying that the Caps didn't bust their, their humps to get force back the, jack and force turnovers right. and stuff like that. They controlled space no really well. They, 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 took they the sure away. Yeah, did. They their really wall did. play was good. Their sticks yeah. were good. But you could see numerous times the Bruins actually had the puck and they actually overhandle it, turn it over right there. But again, if you want to give them a, a takeaway versus a giveaway, I don't I won't say I don't care, but I really don't care. The <laughs> fact of the matter is the How Bruins. How do you really feel? Exactly. The, the, the Bruins didn't value it enough at times. And I again, I just go back to the fact that they couldn't get their head 
synced with their hands mm -hmm. and their feet. Mm -hmm. and, and that's just part of being ultra, ultra sharp. Well, John Carlson, someone we highlighted in pregame for scoring his 150th goal of his career. You mentioned played in a thousandth game. He got the game winning goal in this one in the first period to make it one nothing. And that's all they needed. Good shot from the point. Here's the face off play and they get it back. They being the caps and they do a give and go and the Bruins get two guys on one side, both uh, 13 coil and 74 to Brusque. Watch right here. So DeBrusque is going to seal, then he's going to come back to the middle. I beg your pardon, right there, you see in the middle. Now when the puck goes back to the point, he attacks his inside out. Then he's supposed to take away that guy. Coyle goes over there as well. Marchand kind of gets caught in that almost no man's land area, Barry. And then it's almost like the puck comes, it's not almost, the puck comes off his stick with almost a, like a knuckleball effect here. Yeah, with, this, with the give and go for Strom High, I really like Wilson. As we, he started the play, Billy, on that turnover at the top of the circle right there, but then he throws it back to the point and then goes right to the net and he ends up becoming that screen. And John Carlson is our Subaru star of the game tonight. Was his 10th of the season. Meanwhile, adding to that 150 total. By Pretty one. darn good First. offensive defenseman, huh, Billy? Yeah. Man, yeah. Beautiful. Oh, man, good career. And yep. look at that at the top of the list. Already was, but continuing that lead for most goals by defenseman in Capitals franchise history. All right, guys, uh, how many morning brews did you miss? Was surgery any? Zippo. Zero. Yes. This man just loves You can sit to in bed work. doing a podcast. Yeah, you really can. You really can. Hey. <laughs> and you're doing one tonight, right? We are. Yes. Razor and I are going to do one tonight and uh, poor talk Razor. about. Oh, yeah, I know. Goodness. Poor Razor. I agree. <laughs> I, I know. Geez, with friends like you, who yeah, I know. Uh, but no, listen, we're going to talk a little bit about this game and about what's coming up, and uh, that'll be about it because there's not too much to talk about this one. No, not in this one. Very low scoring, low effort, low shots for the Boston Bruins, but you can get it at nesson.com slash podcast or wherever you get your podcast. And of course, as always, it's proudly presented by Berkshire Bank. Plenty more to come on Bruins Overtime Live. We're going to get dressing room reaction to the Bruins' loss tonight in Washington. Plus, Brickles one-on-one -on -one with head coach Jim Montgomery after the break, so stay tuned for that. And then later in post-game final, we're going to bring you the latest on the Eastern Conference playoff chase. Lots of things can change. Some really big, important games tonight. Stay with us for that. We'll be right back.